Hey, what's up everybody? My name is Shovel, and today I've got something a little bit different. Um, if you saw my last video, you'd see that I uploaded my first Moab gameplay, and I was very excited about it, but I also found some unique things that I think really helped me to improve my chances of getting a Moab, and I really want to share it with everyone today, so this is going to be a how to get a Moab guide, and what I think is probably the easiest way to do it. So, I want to start off with just creating a full Moab class. I want to go into everything from primary, secondary, I want to go through all of it, and I'll get to map positions and kill streaks later, but I want to just dive right in here, and we'll start with the primary weapon. So, for most maps, uh, a lot of the conflicts that you're going to have are going to be close to mid-range, so I think the best choice is a submachine gun. You can use assault rifles. I have nothing against them. I even use them, but the most of the maps that are in Modern Warfare 3 are a little bit smaller, so you really want to stick to submachine guns. They have great maneuverability. You're not going to be having trouble jumping out of the way of bullets or anything like that. And I guess I can go through a couple of what my top choices would be. Um, my number one choice would be the MP7. It has great accuracy, very little recoil, it does great damage. Overall, probably my favorite. Second place, I would say the P90. Because it's, in my opinion, a little bit stronger close range just because it has that larger magazine. Um, I think it's a little bit more accurate from hip fire range and it does a little bit more damage closer up, but I don't like it as much at mid and far range. So that's why it's second. And third would be the PP90M1. Now this is an excellent gun. The damage is much higher, in my opinion, at close and mid range than either the MP7 or the P90. But I really don't like the iron sights on them, and I find I have a little bit of trouble aiming down the sights. But if you worry about your aim a little bit, then this is definitely the gun to choose, because you're going to find that it does a lot of damage and it's going to really compensate at close range. But because it's my favorite and I know it best, I'm going to use the MP7. Now for attachments, I would definitely go for the two attachments and I really don't think there's too much else you could do other than rapid fire and silencer. You really need that silencer because the approach we're going for is kind of like a stealth Moab. You don't want people to see you, you don't want them to know where you are, and you really want to get the first jump, so you want to be able to maneuver around without them knowing where you are. So, you really want that silencer on to help hide you if you shoot at someone else. Now, for secondary weapons, you have a little bit of leniency here, but definitely choose something that you're strong with. Now, it's a little bit newbie, but I like the FMG Akimbo because when you're going Moab hunting, you really can't be too careful. You want to make sure you have something you're good with. You want to make sure you have something that's good to fall back on that you're not going to struggle with. Another good secondary is the MP9, but I wouldn't really put a Kimbo on this. I would just leave it as a silencer because it's really good with just one. But for this class, we're going to use the Akimbo FMGs. For lethal, this one's really all for you. This one, you can do whatever you want. My personal favorite is the Bouncing Betty, because I find I get a kill with it pretty easily almost every time. But the Tactical, you don't really have a choice with. It's gotta be Portable Radar, it's the only choice, it's the best choice. You're gonna be able to see so much happening, and you're really gonna be able to pick up on people. The only problem is people with Assassin. It's gonna be very crippling. Now, for the first perk, you have, I think, two choices in my personal opinion. You have Sleight of Hand, which would be my preferred choice, because it really gets that chance to change to secondaries quick in those times of need if you don't have enough time to reload. It gets reloads out quick, you're not going to be caught by someone while reloading as often. But if you're not as confident with other people's guns, then I would suggest Scavenger, because if you're going to die as soon as you have to pick up someone else's guns, it's not really going to help how fast you can reload them. So Scavenger is also applicable, but I would say the best if you are comfortable with using other guns would be Sleight of Hand Pro. Now, for the second one, there really is only one option in my mind, but you could kind of do it two ways. I've done it two ways myself. Assassin is really the way to go. It's going to keep you hidden, and it keeps with that stealth idea. To keep you hidden off the radar, you're not going to show up as much. But you could also use Hardline, but I'll get a little bit into that later after I go over the killstreaks. 
The third perk, this one is, again, all yours. You can choose whatever you want. I like Steady Aim because I have the Akimboed secondaries, but if you don't have an Akimboed, then I would suggest maybe Dead Silence, or if you're using an Assault Rifle, try Marksman. Uh, for the Strike Package, this is what's interesting. This is what is really going to help you out. Now, you're only going to use two kill streaks. You're going to use UAV and Ballistic Vests. And the reason for this is because the whole idea of this is to keep the UAV up as often as possible and keep the Ballistic Vest on at all times. So when you get to the end where you're close and normally you would have died, now when you run into that person, you're not going to die. You're going to have that edge. You're not going to get that one unlucky hit that kills you in like one or two shots. You're going to take much more damage. It's really going to make a difference. This is what saved me because I was one of those people that was frustrated with trying to get it with Specialist. It's just really hard to stay alive. But with the Ballistic Vest, it really keeps you alive for a lot longer. So this is the killstreak setup, and this brings me back to the second perk, the red perk. You can also do this with Hardline. It works a little bit better with Hardline, I think, if you're by yourself to keep those Ballistic Vests coming, to keep the UAVs up. But I would suggest Assassin still, because I think it is probably the best one to stay hidden. Death Streak doesn't matter, because if you're going for mobs, you're not going to need it. Now, this is my preferred class. This is what I got my mobs with. This is what I will probably get most of my mobs with. If you do want to go for an assault rifle, I'd say my favorite would be the ACR, followed by the MK14, if you're comfortable with it and can aim, because it is a single-fire weapon, but it does lots of damage. It's really great. I like it. Um, and I'd say third would probably be, for me, the SCAR. A lot of people would argue that it might be the Type 95, but I feel like the MK14 and the Type 95 kind of fill the same role. But I like the MK14 just a little bit more. But if you want to use an assault rifle, I would suggest the ACR. I like the kick and the silencer. Again, with the silencer, just because it's really what you want to stay hidden. You don't want to give away your position by firing off a bullet. Um, so that's what you would use if you do want to use an assault rifle. Just for this class, I'm going to keep it as a submachine gun. And obviously, camo doesn't really matter. It's whatever you like. But this is the class that I would suggest if you have been really struggling with Moabs. This is really good. I'm going to cut over to some maps to show you some spots on them that I think would really help you out. Okay, now we are here on Mission. Now this is one of the maps that I was able to get a Moab on, and I just want to talk a little bit about map positioning. Now, there is the class which is going to help you out a lot, and I've got it here, and you're really going to need more than just that. A good class, you can get them off of a lot of good players that you see, but what I really want to show is some extra things that you can do. Now, this spot right here is a great spot, and I want to talk a little bit about why it's such a great spot. Now, when you're going for Moabs, there's two things that you want to make sure. Number one, you want to make sure that you're going to have enough traffic through the area that you're staying in to get enough kills, and number two, that you're going to be safe in that area. Now, there's not too many areas on this map that you're going to get enough traffic to get that many kills, so I'd say this area in the center, even though it's a little bit risky, is going to be your best bet. Now, for portable radar spots, I really like to put it right by this plant here. Um, it seems like it doesn't get destroyed very often. It gives you an entire area. It shows you this ramp here, which gets you a lot of kills, and it would also get you dead a lot, too. It shows you a lot of things that uh, were really going to help you out. You can lean over this edge here and get some kills, but what you're looking for in a map spot is somewhere that you're really going to feel comfortable, that you're not going to worry so much about dying. And you also want to make sure you get all those kills. Now, a great place is to look down this road here. Uh, you're going to get a lot of people poking up. You're going to get a lot of people down this lane here as well. And most of your traffic's probably going to be up that ramp, and you can also peek over and if you want to do some fancy maneuvers, jump down here and get some free kills. But when you decide what way to look, because 
one way is opposite from the other. You're going to either get people from here or from over here. Now, what you really want to be doing, and this isn't a hard and fast rule that's always going to work, but if your entire team is spawning over here, that's where they are, what you want to be doing is watching more this side. You're going to have to kind of trust your team, which is where the luck aspect comes in, and trust them to make sure that they're going to keep you covered from behind. Don't jump out in the open and leave yourself exposed. Don't stand here and look out here. You want to still protect yourself, but you want to keep an eye on the radar, but chances are the enemy's going to spawn on the other side. If you keep teammates to your back, you're going to have a much better chance of them killing someone before they get you. And this is really true in a lot of maps, and I could do a guide like this on other maps, and if this gets some interest and people want me to, I will. Um, if you're not using the Bouncing Betty, then you can put whatever you want, wherever you want, if it's a grenade. I like this spot here. People always rush through there without thinking, and you'll get a free kill almost every single time. One thing you have to watch out for is this truck blowing up. If it does and you're too close, it will kill you even with a ballistic vest. But overall, this is a really excellent spot. This is where I got one of mine, and I think it would help a lot of people as well. You have to be a little bit comfortable with getting people that just peek out. You're not always going to have people that just run out. You're just, just going to see the head of people that come here. But as long as you're comfortable with that, then this is a really excellent spot. But it's not just having a great spot to kill people, because you're going to need time to drop ballistic vests, to recover, pick up weapons, and adjust everything. And the other thing I always look for in a spot is somewhere to fall back to. Somewhere to hide, somewhere to stay hidden that you're not going to get killed right away. And my preferred spot is kind of a noobish spot, because people a lot of times will sit here, but right in this plant. If you get in here, you can drop ballistic vests down, people will run right by you and won't even notice. It's very tucked away, even if you come up on someone, you're a little bit hard to see in there. A lot of people will try to sit in this corner, and this is bad because anyone that comes through here is going to see you right away. You're going to get a lot of deaths there. That's not what you want to be doing. If you can't make it there, you can sit here, definitely lie down. You don't want to get shot from down on the bottom area there. You can drop a ballistic vest here and get set up. You can change weapons there, reload everything, regroup. And if you're really uh, in a tight spot with people coming up from that side, you can back into this corner as long as your teammates are over here, so that you're going to stay safe. As long as they're there, then this is also a relatively safe spot to do it, as long as you're quick, it's not as good as staying in that bush over there. But this should help you to get your vests on, help you to reload weapons, help you to uh, adjust anything, you can also get some sneaky kills from the bush, but don't abuse it too much because you don't want people to check your hiding spot. You want to keep that hidden. You want to keep that as a safe area. So don't go too crazy with killing from it, um, especially if this is something you use a lot. But that's really most of what I have to say for this video. This area should have enough traffic to get you the kills you need. And if this video helped you at all to get at least closer to a Moab, you're not going to get one every game, and this was pretty in-depth, so it's not just for pros, so maybe some people skip to just this map positioning, but if this helped you get closer, if it helped you get one, leave a like, uh, subscribe to me, and especially if you want me to show spots and areas on more maps, uh, just leave a comment, leave a like, any feedback you can give me is going to really help me out, It'll I'll be really thankful for it, but that's about all there is to this guide. Uh, I will see you next time.